Well, today on DC News, now at noon, protesting for people incarcerated, what they're demanding from President Biden. And the new prime minister, meet the new leader of the UK and how he's shattering the glass ceiling. And good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Mark Hall, taking a live look outside. A great, cloudy fall day, but hopefully the rain is gone. Meteorologist Damon Matson joins us with a check on the forecast. And Damon, first of all, welcome back. I missed you. And second, what kind of weather can we expect to see as we start our work week? Well, thank you very much, Mark. Good to be back on the noon show. First time <laughs> in a couple of weeks here. But yeah, overall, to start out this work week, yeah, it's a gray day. It's not going to look the nicest out there. But at the very least, that rainfall that was there to end our weekend has pretty much come to an end. There's some of the rainfall totals. Again, it was soggy for some of us. Most of that rainfall stayed right along the I-95 corridor. It pushed up into parts of Frederick County a little bit with some light rain there, but otherwise, yes, that rainfall stayed out of our western counties as you got to the I-81 corridor and then off into the mountains. There was no rain to speak of last evening as that coastal system pushed by with Pretty little fanfare for the most part. Now, it's still, though, hanging around with us, and that's what's causing all of that cloud cover you're seeing out there. Now, we are getting some clearing. There's some sunshine back across far western Maryland into the eastern panhandle. That's mostly where we're going to see any sunshine today. These clouds are going to hang tough as you push east right through central Maryland, parts of northern Virginia, and then through that D.C. metro into southern Maryland. Don't expect to see much sunshine, possibly a few peaks here and there, but that is going to be few and far between. But then you add the radar picture into the mix. Yeah, we don't have any rainfall really to speak of. The last of that pushed through last night, and now we could just have some light drizzle along the coast closer to the Chesapeake Bay, but otherwise we're not looking at any significant precipitation chances as we move ahead with time. So it's going to be a decent day to still get out and about here this afternoon. Temperatures will be in the 60s where you find that cloud cover off to the west in the mountains. It'll actually be warmer today where the sunshine is in the 70s. There again is that chance for some light drizzle, but otherwise it does stay dry. We just don't see much of that sunshine. So as we move forward into the rest of this work week, when will this cloud cover finally break for us? If at all, we'll let you know in your full forecast coming up here in just a bit. OK, Damon, thank you. Well, happening now, about two dozen people are gathered outside of the White House to demand the president release people in prison on nonviolent marijuana charges. We continue to be disappointed by our elected officials and the fact that Biden said that he would release cannabis prisoners during his campaigning season. And it has been almost two years that he has been in office and he hasn't done a thing. It's disgraceful. Well, to start, the group say that the president can release 420 cannabis prisoners by Christmas as a sign of good faith. Well, new at noon, targeted shooting. D.C. police continue their search for the suspect. One man is dead after a shooting near Nats Park. It, the shooting happened on N Street Southeast, right in between Half and Van Streets. And police say they found a man with gunshot wounds inside of a car outside of the Bet MGM Sportsbook. Uh, police identified the victim as 31-year-old Kavanaugh, Washington of Oxon Hill, Maryland. And many people who live there say they're, they were rattled by the firing of gunshots in the neighborhood, telling us that they heard as many as 10 to 15 shots fired. Multiple shots ran out within a minute, and we jumped the barricade, started sprinting down the street. Everybody hit the deck. They were all running. No one knew what was going on. We're committed to keeping this neighborhood safe and to making this a place where people feel comfortable coming, spending time. Well, police do have footage of a dark-colored SUV speeding away from the scene. And if you have any information, you ask to give them a call. $25,000 reward is being offered. Well, new at noon, a former Treasury Chief Rishi Sunak is set to become Britain's next prime minister after winning the conservative leadership race. He now faces the huge task of stabilizing the party and country at a time of economic and political turbulence. He will be Britain's first leader of color and the nation's third leader just this year. Sunak will take over as prime minister from Liz Truss. She quit last week after 45 days in office. 
He's only rival conceded and withdrew after failing to reach the nomination threshold of 100 conservative lawmakers needed to stay in the race. Well, covering your metro today, crime on your commute from Metro Rail to Metro Bus, the DMV's largest transit system, has been seeing quite the increase in violence lately. Last week, a woman was pushed off the bus, and just this past weekend, another woman was robbed on the escalator at the Columbia Heights Metro Station. Turns out these incidents are just the latest examples of a major problem this year for Metro. DC News Now's transportation reporter Joseph Omo has what you need to know. Yeah, over the past couple of months, Metro officials, they'll tweet out, they'll say at press conferences that safety is their top priority. But a quick check of some crime numbers from the Metro Transit Police Department shows that they've still got some work to do. Look at these right here. Crime stats right on Metro Transit Police's website show that we are in a much more violent space today than we were just a year ago. So far this year, there have been 142 cases of aggravated assault throughout the system. This time last year, it was 113. Look at this one here, larceny cases, 227 so far this year, 150 at this time last year. And as to where all of these assaults are happening, same thing. The number of these incidents happening right on the trains and buses themselves all up over the last year. So you might be asking, is it safe to ride the metro? Well, a spokesperson told me yesterday, essentially, yes, it is. Here's what they had to say. Unfortunately, metro is a microcosm of our larger society and the region, which continues to see this type of unacceptable behavior. While we believe metro is safe for customers, we do ask our customers and employees to remain vigilant. We also spoke to a rider earlier today at the Tenleytown American University Station. Here's what they told us about riding on the metro. Generally, I do feel safe. Um, I usually travel in groups, which is like something that I like to do. I feel a lot safer doing that, but um, it is definitely a little scary and something you need to be vigilant about, you know? Yeah. All right, so some context here. Yes, the crime numbers are up. However, ridership is also up from this time of the year versus last year. So you have to factor that in. Either way, it's a problem that Metro officials are dealing with. About a month ago, Metro started a new safety patrol operation where they told passengers to expect to see more officers riding trains and buses. But again, they're asking you as a rider, if you see something, say something. Reporting here in the studio, I'm Joseph Olmo. Back to you. Uh, big thanks to Joseph. When new today, 16-year-old Ethan Crumley has pleaded guilty to terrorism and first-degree murder in a Michigan school shooting. Four students were killed and more were injured. The shooting nearly a year ago at Oxford High School. Crumley pleaded guilty to 24 charges. On the day of the shooting, school staff discovered violent drawings and desperate messages created by Crumley. Officials say that his parents declined to take him home and he was allowed to stay in school. His parents, James and Jennifer Crumley, are charged with involuntary manslaughter. They're accused of making a gun accessible at home and ignoring Ethan's mental health needs. Well, there's only two weeks left until Election Day, and Republicans and Democrats are rallying to make an impression on the American people. Many lawmakers are saying everything is on the line for these midterms. Basil John reports on what both sides are saying. In two weeks, Americans will be lining up at the polls to cast their votes in the midterm elections. We're prepared to take on the drug companies. We're prepared to take on the insurance companies and create an economy that works for all of us. On CNN's State of the Union, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders fears a low voter turnout and urges Democrats to remind Americans of what's at stake. Democrats have got to do is contrast their economic plan with the Republicans. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi told CBS's Face the Nation, everything is on the line this November. So Social Security and Medicare are on the line. A woman's right to choose is on the line. The planet is on the line. Polling shows many races across the country are close. And New York Democratic Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney told ABC's This Week this is expected. We are in a very competitive election. We know it's going to be a challenge. We know it's going to be hard. But South Carolina Republican Congresswoman Nancy May has a positive outlook for the GOP for Election Day. I do believe Republicans will be in the majority, and we're looking at a potential 53-seat majority in the Senate now. And that was Basil John reporting with the 50-50 split in the Senate and a slight Democrat majority in the House. Lawmakers say neither side will back down. Well, Washington reporter Bob Woodward is expected to release 20 full unedited interviews he recorded with former President Donald Trump from 2016 to 2020. 
Woodward, the reporter who broke the Watergate scandal in the 70s, wrote in the Post yesterday that he has never released full interviews with the subjects. However, Woodward said that he believes the former president is dangerous and a threat to democracy, and that has prompted him to release these interviews. An audio book with all 20 interviews will be available on Amazon tomorrow. The former president so far has not commented on the release. Well, new research is pointing to different symptoms of COVID-19 based on vaccination status. A new study from Zoe Health found outside of the usual symptoms like sore throat, runny nose, cough, and headache, different symptoms can depend on vaccination status. The study found that those who were vaccinated and blocked a blocked nose was another common symptom. Sneezing was one of the most frequently reported symptoms in the partially vaccinated, while fewer was pre prevalent in those who were not vaccinated. Now, researchers also found that the symptoms of the Omicron variant were milder than the Delta variant in their study. Well, happening today, celebrating Diwali, uh, in, celebrating Diwali is India's biggest and most important holiday of the year. And here is how people across the United States are celebrating. Diwali is like summer, summarizes festival of lights. Host Anita Trehan held a special Diwali brunch in her lower Manhattan apartment to celebrate one of the oldest festivals of Hinduism. Diwali symbolizes the victory of light over darkness, good over evil, and knowledge over ignorance. It's a five-day festival that follows the lunar calendar and stretches back more than 2,500 years. It was based on a mythological story of the god Brahma uh, being exiled by his stepmother and returning after 14 years of exile and the whole country welcoming back this great good god. And they. Um, lit their homes with Deepavali lights. To celebrate Diwali in 2022, people dressed up in glittery, sparkly clothes and ate celebratory vegetarian fare. Potatoes and chickpeas cooked with flavorings and tamarind and a festive salad with pomegranates and many, many sweets. It's all about joy and family, friends and food. And obviously uh, the Indians do it in big scale. Um, so, you know, for all of us, um, you know, it's Christmas, New Year, all wrapped into one, you know, and generally it's the Hindu high holiday is how I've sort of explained it to people. And so many people in this multicultural celebration of light over darkness at this Diwali brunch were pleased with Mayor Adams' decision to make Diwali a New York City school holiday in 2023, since this is a holiday celebrated by more than a billion people all over the world. And a time to be with friends and family. It's a very festive occasion in India. I just left Bombay. They were getting ready for Diwali. All the lights were going up in front of the shops. People were shopping. You buy new clothes. You spend time giving gifts to friends and family. It's a wonderful occasion.